No, that's mommy's camera. This is Akira, and he's the reason I've been very busy and haven't made as many videos lately. I thought he might like fall asleep in my arms and be all cute on camera, but you're a little bit energetic for that. So while I talk, I'm gonna have some video up of me painting in case you wanna watch that as well. But mostly today, I wanna talk about Plan April, my plans for it, and talk about the community challenge or community aspect of it. So I'm making a study guide. Uh oh, oh no. Okay, he's gonna go run around and get some energy out. Let me consult the master list. I'll also put chapter markers in this video if you wanna jump to different sections, specific things that I'm gonna talk about. First, let me explain what Plen April is. You can kind of think of it as Plen Air April, and it was started by a group of artists in California, I think animators, who wanted to encourage each other to go outside and paint from life because it is one of the best learning tools you can do. Painting from nature, you learn so much, it's hard to describe. <laughs> and it is a huge challenge for a lot of people even though I do it all the time, I still find it very challenging. But it's very rewarding to me, and I love being outside, so I actually prefer it. So anyway, this art group started Plen April, a month-long challenge, and they do, like, uh, prizes and all sorts of things. So if you want to go with, like, the official Plen April route, you can find their website if you just Google it. But I always do my own thing. I use the hashtag just to kind of stay connected to the social media community, the network of Plan April painters, Plan, Plan April painters. But I prefer to do my own thing because I always have different constraints each year. <laughs> so I've come up with a study plan, study guide, that gives me a little bit more flexibility and also helps me focus on specific things I want to improve upon. No matter whether you paint outside or what materials you use, even if you're a digital painter, the goal is to paint every single day, even if it's five minutes, even if it's a little one by one inch sketch on a napkin or something. Like It's just to build that habit of daily creation. And with the added challenge of painting outside for some of us, <laughs> it, it does feel like an intimidating challenge at first, but in the past what I found is after a week or two the habit starts to stick and I find myself craving that half an hour or hour that I devote to it each day and because it draws me outside a lot more I kind of shake off the winter cobwebs and I find it so inspiring. So first of all, if you would like to join in my community study guide, be part of our community, I'm going to be pretty active on Discord, which is my kind of online chat server, as well as Instagram. I'll try to post daily, if not every other day, uh, and I'll post stories along the way probably. Um, but otherwise, I am going to try to do like a weekly recap of what's happening here on YouTube. The one tricky thing I'm going to run into is that I am hosting a friend and his mother in mid-April. So for a whole week in April, I'm going to be away. <laughs> I'm going to be hosting and driving them all over and we're going to be staying on Sky, which of course is amazing. And I'm so excited to see them and be on Sky. I'll be taking a lot of reference photos and I'll try to get my daily sketch in, but that one week I'll probably be a little bit less active. However, I'll still try to check in on Discord and kind of see how everyone's doing. I've done Plan April for a few years now and it's been a whirlwind each time, as in, you know, painting outside every day for an entire month is really challenging. <laughs> Basically, the goal is to grow your skills of observation. So painting from life is the key and also painting every day. So it's about building that habit. And this is the time when I kind of kickstart my entire year. So I want to get into the good habit of painting daily, painting outside as much as possible, this time of year it's a little tough because it goes between like freezing rain and snow to bright sunny beautiful days. You never really know what you're going to get in April. <laughs> this year is also a little bit trickier because you know we have Akira now, new kitten, and he takes almost constant supervision. Luckily Wolfie is home with me most times, but this year Wolfie's actually going to be helping our neighbor with lambing season. So any time now, the fields are going to be full of baby lambs. They're so cute. But he'll be called away at like totally unpredictable hours. It could be 2 a.m. because a bunch of their sheep are giving birth and he has to go help with 
all sorts of different jobs. While he's away doing that, I will be obviously babysitting. And until Akira learns not to climb all the curtains and dig up all my house plants and chew every cord in the house and, you know, all the kitten things, <laughs> uh, he kind of does need constant supervision. So I can't go on as many adventures this April as I have done in the past. So I thought if I have all these different constraints this year, and that's kind of common, like I know a lot of people have a lot of time constraints. I thought it would be fun to make a community challenge basically, or a community study guide for how we can incorporate planner into our life during April and study. And if you can't go outside every day, then I have a lot of ideas of how you can continue to grow your skills and be part of a fun community thing. And I've also put together a full blog post detailing the entire month of April, the full study guide, all of the prompts, all of the things we're going to do, all of the things we can focus on, and lots of visual inspiration as well there. It's a little bit more cohesive there, so... But in this video, I'm going to do my best to explain things. Okay, the plan. What is the plan for April? The whole point of a study guide is to introduce a bit of structure into your life and into your art practice, and it should be catered towards your specific goals. I am catering mine towards my specific goals, but I tried to leave enough breathing room so that you could adapt it to what you need. But it is important to take time to really assess what you want to learn during April. If you're going into it with no clue, I mean, that can work. <laughs> you can follow along and you'll probably learn a ton anyway. But I, I recommend taking at least a day or two to maybe write down some things you've been struggling with in your art practice uh, or your goals of what you want to achieve with your art practice someday and kind of break it down into baby steps. For instance, if you want to be able to paint a landscape from imagination, Maybe you need to start by using reference photos, but each day during the month, you could try to change one tiny little thing. Let's say you have a photo of a forest with a mountain in the distance. Well, maybe the first day you paint it as it is, but then the next day you change the sky color or make the mountain a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. And you start to really look at what you can change and then eventually you grow your visual memory, your library, and you can pull from those things and put them into the paintings as you desire. That's how I started doing that. <laughs> uh, anyways, you ha it, I do recommend that you cater this towards your goals as an artist. I think you'll get the most out of it that way. For me personally, I want to focus on color and creative mark making. I mean, these are always things I'm working on in my art, but I love the idea of devoting a whole month to being like really into it and specific with it. And with the color thing, I'm really trying to hone in on understanding grays and browns and more muted tones, but how those contrast or play with bright saturated tones. So I don't want all my paintings to be just like gray muted paintings. I want to learn or get more sensitive to how those balance each other because I love color. I love bright color. <laughs> uh, and then with the mark making, I find that I get kind of stuck using my brushes the same way all the time. And when I first started getting really into gouache years ago, I would use a single brush for an entire painting. And that forced me to be really creative with how to use the brush in a lot of different ways. And I remember thinking back on that. And not only is it a fun way to do a painting kind of quickly without worrying about all your materials, but you really do get a more intimate connection with the tool that you're using that way. And anyway, I'm, I'm not going to dive too much into it now, but that's, that's what I'm going to be working on. I'm not going to use one single brush the whole month, but I am going to really try to play with different ways of mark making. Maybe I'm going to use a stick for some marks one of the days. Who knows? <laughs> I've broken up the study guide into four weeks and how that aligns with the calendar is up to you. Whether your week starts on a Monday or a Sunday, you decide. And if you need a day or two off here and there, that's completely fine too. I do find it really useful to have a break once in a while, especially if it's your first time doing a long art challenge. For week one, I want us to focus on the idea of play. 
And I like this idea because it kind of eases us into the challenge and it keeps the process very joyful and it's a way to bridge the work with play part of our brains so that, you know, yes, it's work. We're doing something every day. We're studying every day, but we are keeping it light and fun and playful. We want to bridge those tightly so that we associate work with fun (laughs) and it will hopefully help us build that habit. The good thing about the first week is that inspiration is on our side. You know, you're you're never more enthusiastic about a project than the first week or so, or the very beginning of the project. Uh, And we'll obviously try to carry that over into the other parts of the month, but let's use it while we have it at the very beginning and just have as much fun as possible. The main rule for week one is that you're not allowed to say that any of your paintings, sketches, marks, are bad or wrong. You're only allowed to think good things about your art. I know that's challenging for a lot of us. I'm always, I'm my own worst critic. I critique the heck out of my stuff as soon as I'm done. We're just pushing out the demons because they will tear us down (laughs) if we let them. Again, I really want to bridge the idea of, of work with fun. And it's not to say we're not going to learn something throughout the month. Of course, you're going to learn a ton, but let's keep ourselves motivated, especially from the very beginning. And especially if it's your first art challenge, I know that's going to be tricky for some of you. Uh, And so when you are finished with a sketch each day, take a few minutes, even if it's just on a sticky note next to it or something, or in your sketchbook next to it, and write down at least three things that you enjoyed, whether it was about the process of painting it, maybe you splashed a bunch of color and that was fun, or something in the painting as a result that you really liked. Maybe you did a nice job with the lighting or something. In terms of subject matter for week one, I think it's best to start with something you enjoy because you got to get into it somehow. Uh, In the blog post I'm sharing, I have a bunch of ideas where you can start with if you aren't sure. Uh, I also have a recommendation. I've joined a Facebook group called Free Reference Photos for Artists. It's a private group, but if you request to join, they usually let you. So if you don't have a lot of reference photos on hand, that's a great way to start. Plus, it's nice how they organize their library. It's like the albums are by subject. So if you want to paint owls, you can find an album full of owls. Are you a little bundle of energy? (coughs) No, you can't go up there going to eat you up because you're cute. I have a tapestry hanging behind the camera and he's like really trying to get to the tapestry. (laughs) That would be a disaster. In week two, we're going to start finding a focus. My focus this year, well, for week two at least, is going to be flowers. I'm not overly familiar with painting flowers and I find them quite challenging. I find the intense saturation of the color almost a little bit blinding and I I have struggles with like my color sensitivity when I try to see the various colors and the muted tones you know the difference between the highlights and the shadows and all of that I struggle with that a lot so I'm gonna hone in on that for my focus Um, you, you know you could also think about something you really enjoyed during the first week if you started painting some forest scenes or mountain scenes or houses or something that you had a lot of fun with Uh, go for it. Do that again in the second week, but make it your focus. If you want to join me for the flower focus, I have a huge reference photo pack of flowers available on my Patreon. I'll put a link in the description. Um, And I have a lot more reference photos on there if you want that as well. But I also posted a bunch of ideas you could focus on. I basically listed all the ideas I was interested in before I chose flowers, and I'm sharing that list in the blog post. So if you can't think of something, maybe you'll find something there. Now week three, I have a feeling a lot of people are going to be pushing their limit for uh, maintaining a daily art habit. I get it. Usually week three is a bit tough for me as well. And then week four is usually okay because you're like, oh, I'm almost at the end. I can do this. (laughs) But week three, you need a little bit more motivation. So I think we should go back to a place of comfort. So what I'm going to suggest for week three is a comfortable thing, but kind of uncomfortable. Well, hear me out. Uh, First of all, do not use references this week. I forbid you. (laughs) You are going to look out your window, you're going to get in your car and drive somewhere, or you're going to walk somewhere, whatever it takes. 
or set up a bowl of fruit in your living room and paint that as long as it's from life. No reference photos even if it's a stapler on your desk. I've done that before too, by the way. <laughs> I often just look outside my window and paint something. Maybe that's boring for some of you if you don't have a good view, but otherwise walk down the street, even if it's 20 feet. The focus for week three is going to be repetition. We're going to paint the same thing every day. There's so much value to be gained in painting something more than once. And especially if you paint it three, four, five, ten 10 times, we're going to paint the same thing every day for the whole week. What you learn by doing something over and over and over again is you learn to see, like truly see the subject. Think about how Monet went outside and painted the haystacks over and over and over again. He painted those haystacks in the fields in snow, in sun, sunset, bright sunny skies, like every lighting condition you can think of. He went out, but not just to paint the haystack. You know, a boring subject like a haystack, how inspiring can that be? He was painting the light and the way that light affects color. To me, it's fascinating because even with such, such a simple subject, he made those paintings come to life. It's just his way of using color. It's like he creates this sense of color vibration in his paintings. I find it fascinating to see a subject in one type of light and then again in another type of light and it's completely different. The way a tree looks in bright sun versus shadow or a distant hill or whatever. There's so many things that change in the landscape as the light changes. So whether you're outside painting, whether you're inside painting your fruit, or whether you're looking out your window or from your car, choose the same view. You can paint different things within the view. That's also a fun challenge. Uh, but you're going to end up with seven paintings that are similar, but hopefully you'll realize by the end how much the different days or the different lighting situations you saw it in can change things. If you paint something once, that's it, you move on with your life, you don't gain as deep of an understanding of it as you could if you painted it more than once. Trees are a great example because I sometimes go out and paint the same tree a lot and every single time I see the bark a little bit differently, I see the way the branches appear a little bit differently behind the leaves and there's so many things to focus on. Um, along the way, you don't have to paint, you know, a full landscape or a full scene. You could pick little pieces of your subject. Because we're painting the same thing each day, we want to keep it a little interesting. You could also try changing up your color combinations. That's a really fun way to paint the same thing over and over again. And you learn a lot about color mixing by doing that. And I really want to stress the idea of painting what you see and not what you think you see. That is so important from when you're painting from life because we all have these preconceived notions of how things look. You know, the sky is blue, the grass is green, the tree is brown and green, but in reality it is very different. So use this as an opportunity to try to see a little bit deeper. By week four, I'm sure a lot of us are going to be having some decision fatigue, you know, getting a little bit tired or not knowing what to paint or, you know, uh, it's just a good time to rely on some prompts. So I've made a list of prompts. My prompts are not super specific, like an apple or, well, I can't think of anything. <laughs> God. That feeling when you literally can't think of a word. <laughs> Anyways, my prompts are more descriptive. Um, so I've put all of that in the blog post. You can go check it out. Uh, it's more about how something makes you feel and then choosing your subject based on that. So for example, one of them is tranquil. What makes me think of tranquil? Water or even just being in a forest or among the trees. So I might paint light glittering through some trees or find a pond somewhere and watch the light dancing across the surface of the water. You know, there's different things I could choose based on that. I left it open to interpretation. So I'm really excited to see the results from week four. Uh, I can't wait to see what everyone comes up with for that. And at the end of the month, there's a couple extra days, you know, you can fit them in however you want, but I like to take a couple days to reflect on the month and make a plan going forward. In Scotland, May is an absolutely beautiful time to be outside. 
especially after a really long, rough winter. <laughs> so April's kind of that transition month. I'm getting outside, I'm painting more. And then in May, I feel like I really have my artistic wings back. So I'm going to take advantage of that. And I'm going to try to make a plan for going into May, how to keep that momentum going. I'll probably reassess how my materials were working out for me. I'll choose a couple color combinations that I really enjoyed using during April and take that into May with me. And of course, I'll reflect on everything I've done during April because at that point, even if you didn't do every single day during April, even if you did a few times a week, that is a huge accomplishment. So pat yourself on the back, <laughs> take some time to celebrate that. Um, and especially write down every single thing you can think of that you learned. Did you learn how to mix a nice green? Did you get a little bit better at drawing perspective? Like if you were drawing buildings or something like that, really celebrate your successes. Of course, you can also critique yourself, but be kind because an art challenge is a challenge. That's what it, it says it in the title. It's meant to be challenging. And there's no point in putting yourself down for any reason for an art challenge. The whole point was to have fun and to grow as an artist and to hopefully get some good habits. I love the idea of a lot of you trying plein air for the first time and getting the plein air bug. <laughs> it can be contagious. And one last thought is that you're not supposed to be creating masterpieces during an art challenge. This is just about studying, practicing. There's so many aspects to it, but creating a masterpiece that you're going to sell in a cafe or sell online, whatever, like that's not the point. Don't put that pressure on yourself. Keep it light, keep it fun. And I am very excited. I wanted to post this video a little bit early so you can make some plans and get excited for it. Um, and don't forget, I'll put all the links into everything in the description below, but definitely check out the blog post, which has all this information in a much more cohesive layout. <laughs> and you can follow along during April. During April, I'm going to post a video at the end of each week, kind of recapping what I've been doing and maybe talk about how it's going. Um, I might even do a live stream at the end of April where we can discuss how it went <laughs> and maybe share some things that we created, share what we're excited about. Let me know if you're interested in that. It could be fun. Um, and now I'm going to go relieve Wolfie of his fatherly duties and take care of Akira for a while while I try to edit this video. It's probably going to take me like eight hours though. <laughs> He's very distracting in a good way. Okay. That's it for me. I will see you all next time. Take care, everyone.